to the coach for the first 15 minutes. We will then dismiss the student athletes. They'll go back to the locker room where they're available with all the other student athletes, and coach will remain up here for another 15 minutes approximately. A uh, little favor, if you would, please turn your phones off. I'm sure you've turned them back on since last night. If you would, please check your phones. When you ask your very first question, would you please give your name and your affiliation to be sure that uh, the coach and the student athletes know who you are? If you want to ask all five of the student athletes a question or two of them or three or whatever, it makes no difference, but please give us the order that you're asking because the ASAP people are doing the quotes remotely and it's very difficult if they don't know which one of the student athletes is speaking. So, we'll, we've got microphones we can get to you, and we'll get started momentarily. Oh, and by the way, if you have any special requests, Julie Bennett, the SID, I think will be here, and you can ask for a special request um, if you need to talk to her. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Yes, we'll have to be sure. Yeah, if you're going to ask one of the Alexises, you'll need to make sure you identify which Alexis you're asking the question for, please. Again, because this is remote. Otherwise, they'll know, but our people recording might not. That'd be okay. what that means well we'll wait and see you you might send something back because barb here come our student athletes now <laughs> morning ladies where are the rest of you Maybe somebody needs to go up and tell them. Oh. Yeah, I can tell that. Welcome, y'all. That way, y'all hear your equipment, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's freezing up here. I've complained about that for the last three days. You could hang meat up here. Where's Coach?
Okay, we're joined by the Lady Bears from Baylor, Coach Kim Mulkey, her student athletes, Nina Davis, Alexis Jones, Naya Johnson, Alexis Prince, and Beatrice Mompremier. Coach, opening statement? Not today. Okay. It's Easter Sunday. That is my opening statement. Well, that's great, Coach. Thank you. We got a question on the outside right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Open it up for me for both Nina first and also Naya. Third year in a row, you're, you're at this stage, regional final lead eight. Is the feeling any different this year? And, and what is the anticipation like for you guys right now? <clears throat> um, you know, you celebrate yesterday, and then now it's time to focus again. You've been here before, like you said, uh, being to the Elite Eight. You just can't get too excited. And, uh, we have a job to do. The job is not done yet. I've been here, what, hitting the Elite Eight twice now against Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, it just get tired. And like I've been saying, eight is not enough. And that is our motto is until Monday night. On my mindset, I think we're all focused. We're just excited and ready to play. Um, we've been here three years in a row, and we kind of know what the atmosphere and what everything is going to be like. Um, we just have to come out focused and ready to play and just know that it could be our last game. Questions for either the student athletes or coach. You can ask either one. Question on the right middle. Steven Arzadavi, we, we've talked about it several times, you know, your last chance to get in the Final Four. Just what does it mean to, for you to have this opportunity again, but knowing that it is the last opportunity for you? Um, you know, just got to go in there, stay on course like we did yesterday against Florida State, doing whatever it takes, paying attention to the scout report, um, giving all you have, because you know this can be your last game of the season, especially for me, my last game for the whole year. And, um, you know, just I just try to go out there and give all I have. Question on the outside right. Good morning, uh, Ron Callen from 1190 KEX in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Nina, can you talk a little bit about to get to the Elite Eight, you got to be a special team. What makes this team special to get to this level? Just our hard work. You know, it's been a long year. It's been a long season, and we've had up and downs. We experienced a loss, and they kind of put us in the right mindset, and it allowed us to know that we wasn't as good as we were. Um, we're just a team that's really unselfish. We have a lot of scores. We don't really care who scores. That changes um, day in and day out. We just buy into everything that coach say. We play good defense, and we just have good um, teamwork, and that's just what makes us great. Question on the rear. Jerry Hill, Beta Bear Insider. Nina, I know you've talked about it before, but with the balance, you haven't had to do as much this year scoring-wise. But once the NCAA tournament starts, do you feel like you need to do more, or is that just what the defense has been giving you? Um, not at all. It's just what the defense has been giving me, and really I just owe all the credit to my teammates. When I have a hot hand, they do a good job of giving me the ball. Um, if the defense was on me and they left another teammate open, they would probably have 20 points. So we just really pay attention to whatever the defense has given us, and that's just how it's been working out these past couple of games. Question on the third row. Alexis Prince, just talk about You've had your ups and downs with your injuries and stuff. What does it feel like for you to be at this point and being able to feel like you're contributing and, and having the second half of the season has been good for you? Um, it feels good to um, just be out there on the floor, um, period, because, like you said, at the beginning of the year, I had uh, another injury. So just any way I contribute, can contribute to the team is, is good. Question on the rear right. David Smoke, ESPN Central Texas. For Nina, is the hardest part right now the waiting game? You've been in tournament play before, but the long day today and then a long day tomorrow before game time. Um, for sure. Just as a competitor, you're anxious to get out there on the court. Um, if we could have played today, I know a lot of us would have wanted to play today. But you know you need rest after you had a um, long game yesterday and a lot of us played a lot of different minutes. But you're definitely excited and you're anxious to get on the court, but I'm sure it will come soon enough. Got a question on the back row. Mitch Wilmer, Waco Tribune Herald. Uh, Nina, Oregon State is, is no for having, you know, it's a very good defense, uh, having a lot of size, but you've, you've had 30 points the last two games. Um, what, what do you see in their defense that you think you could still be successful in? I'm just doing what I do, you know, attacking the goal and just trying to um, cause the defense to collide on me and dish it out to my teammates. And if they don't come, try to get a shot off. <laughs> 
But Oregon State is a great team. They hold their opponents to a lower amount of points, and it's definitely going to be a challenge for us. But I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. Question on the right aisle. This is for uh, the two Alexises. Um, talk a little bit. What are your impressions of Oregon State watching them in person last night? <coughs> 101 on the Beavers. Um, they're really tall. Um, and they can shoot the three really well. And they're tall. Uh, Oregon State, uh, yeah, like she said, they they have size at every position. And they shoot the three ball really well. <laughs> really. <laughs> Outside right. Question for Naya. Is there at all a difference? this year than the previous two times in the regional final? And what separates, I guess, is there something different about this team this year that, uh, than the previous two? Um, mainly, uh, we're young and we've been the underdog the whole season. And um, I think that's what motivates us and drives us, you know, just to prove people wrong and um, just have that, that, that gear to keep going and keep fighting and, you know, just keep that, that foot on the pedal and just keep going and try to be the best team we can be. Question in the middle. Beatrice says, the, uh, as a pro, I, we couldn't let you get by without having you join us. <laughs> as, as a it's freshman of this group uh, up here on the table, what, what has this run meant to you? Just What have you learned about this team and as far as NCAA tournament play and what, how different it is from the regular season? Uh, just being tougher um, <laughs> inside and out and just, just playing the hardest throughout the tournament. Question on the rear right. Nia Johnson, uh, the, uh, the upsets that happened Friday night and some of what's happened in the women's basketball tournament, which we haven't seen much of before, how much is that good for women's basketball? Um, I think it's pretty great, you know. You get the mindset of saying, hey, UConn's going to win every every time or the number one seed is going to beat uh, a lower seed, you know. You just have that mindset. But just proving, like I said, you never know what's going to happen what given night. And um, you just have to bring your A game every time. You just can't take teams for granted. Another question in the rear. Naya, the ball's in your hand at the end of the game. Who are you going to for a winner's back? Myself, of course. <laughs> no, um, you know, it, it makes this team scared because anybody can score at what, no matter what the time is on the clock. Whoever's open and whoever, you know, willing to knock down the shot is, is my choice. You know, whoever's open at that given, that given time, I'm willing to give it to them. And, um, you know, just trust, and trust all my teammates. And um, anybody can score on this team. So whoever's open at that time, I'm willing to give it to them. Further questions for our student athletes? Okay, ladies, we're going to let you guys go back to the locker room and do one-on-ones. Good luck tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Questions for Coach? We'll start on the back row. Got a question on the back row? Peter, do I need to identify myself again? No, you've done that <laughs> once. Kim, uh, same question I asked Naya, and I, and I know she gave the politically correct answer, but winning shots, you know, do y'all go to Nina, do y'all go to Alexis Jones, or, or is it just situation what's open? I think it's situation in the game. Um, I hope that I've got a timeout and I can draw up something. Uh, but if I don't, um, <clears throat> it's just a feel. I'm, I'm, you're never afraid when you have a team this with this much depth. You're never afraid to throw it to any of them. I mean, who are you going to stop on this team? You're going to put somebody on Jones? Great. Put them on Nia, Nina? Great. Um, you have a lot of weapons, and um, they're all confident. Uh, even the freshmen, you didn't see them much yesterday for a reason. Why would I put them back in the game when KK was doing so well? KK has started many games for us. She's one of our leading offensive rebounders. Um, it's just whoever's open, whoever will have a good look, and um, she, she's right. She's going to find you if you're open. All the way in the back. Coach, uh, from what you've seen, what are your thoughts on, on Bruce Hamlin from Oregon State and you know, what she can do for them defensively? Well, she's big, um, first of all, and she's, because of her size, she's a, a 
difficult matchup for a lot of teams. I feel like we match up well with her because we're big. Uh, where we're not big, as big as they are, is on the perimeter. You know, their shooters are six foot and bigger. Um, you know, they guard people in a different way than we do. If you look at how many points um, they're allowing uh, on average to their opponents, they're, they're, it's, it's low. Uh, so that tells you that they stress defense as well. Um, so it'll, it'll be um, a game where you're going to see a lot of um, – great offensive players, but I think you're going to see a game where you're going to see a, a lot of good team defense on both sides. Question on the aisle. You know, the, I mean, you're probably sick of talking about the Elite Eight, but that's, that's become your motto this year. How much do you think it's weighed on the, the upper class when the, the two losses? And, and from a coaching standpoint, you personally, how much – and, you know, you've got high standards in the program. How much does that weight on you? I wouldn't use the word weigh. I mean, when you get to Elite Eight, as I said earlier, you keep it in perspective. How many people would love to do what this program has done? And we don't, we don't pretend that we're not grateful and we don't pretend that that's not a huge accomplishment. But each team, you have to have a theme. You have to have some goal, something to get their attention every day in practice. And... Um, Eight is not enough just for whatever reason. I don't even think I've ever watched that show. Eight is enough. I know that's probably where you think I got it, but I didn't. I uh, just it, – it's something to motivate them, nothing more than that. But um, it's not weighing on us. Look, if we go out there tomorrow night and we play outstanding and we get beat, we're going to walk up here to this podium dejected and, and uh, crying. But, hey, we gave it all we had, and that's all you can do. Question in the middle. Kim, similar to the, that, but not, kind of, not only that, we've talked about the last Final Four chance for Nia and the other seniors. With, with what Nia's been through, talk about what you've seen in her growth and how she's handled this season and getting to this point and leading well, the team. Well, wouldn't you love to be the point guard on a team like this? Man, I would just love it. Uh, she can just find players – uh, and, and just make it easy for them. She knows her teammates, which ones like the hard pass, which ones can handle the hard pass, who needs a bounce pass, when to deliver passes. Uh, and I saw that the very first practice we had her freshman year. She, you know, every day she's going with Odyssey Sims. They're just getting after it. Her game is so different. Odyssey was more of a scoring point guard for us. Naya can score it, so don't challenge her. She's been left open many days, and she'll finish a game with 10, 12, 15 points. It's just that she loves passing. She loves directing traffic. And when you have a, a player like that in your system for four years, you want them to experience what it feels like to get to a Final Four. She's experienced tons of Big 12 championships. Uh, and the only thing that, that she really hasn't experienced is getting to a Final Four, and, and you do want that for her. You want it for Christina Higgins. You want it for Chardonnay Fuqua. Those are three kids that truly epitomize what a student athlete is. They graduated from Baylor in three years. They are working on a master's degree. And when you can have a senior class where all of them are doing that, um, they, they get it. They understand they're there to get a free education, and um, they have certainly taken advantage of it. Question on the front. <clears throat> David Watkins, NBC Dallas. Kim, yesterday you talked about using different motivational tools to get the ladies fired up. But at this point in the game, is, is there anything left to say? Are they, they pretty ha much have a good grasp of what's at stake and self-motivating at this point? I think so. I think the motivation is to get to a Final Four. Uh, I think that um, I, I probably use things more than they do to, to motivate myself as a coach, and yet I share things with my team. And then my assistant coaches, they do all that social media stuff, and they'll see something that they think is funny or something that might fire the kids up, and uh, certainly they – Sometimes they ask for my approval. Sometimes I don't see it until I get to the locker room. And um, you, know, you got to keep it um, fresh. You got to keep them on their toes. Um, I think just the mere fact that uh, we've been to Elite Eights here now the last two years, 
you're playing really on a neutral court that happens to be close to your school. Uh, the crowd will be predominantly Baylor people, and you don't want to disappoint them. They're as excited about us being in this position again as we are, and you just you just want to go and see if you can't take it to the next level. On the outside right. Hey, Coach, um, you talked about Ruth Hamlin. What about Widener, Weiss, Hanson, and Hunter, the rest of that starting cast? Well, what are your impressions? Just an outstanding team. Um, just a team that uh, shares the basketball, a team that knows how to win, a team that understands its strengths and weaknesses, a very well-coached team. Um, just um, fun to watch, fun to watch. And um, obviously, as the kids said, they're big and they can shoot the three. I think any average fan can figure that out. But there's more to that team than just that. They uh, play well together. Um, they're committed to uh, building that program. If you remember when those kids were freshmen, how far they've come. Uh, they played in a league this year that, um, you know, somebody from the Pac-12 is guaranteed they're going to the Final Four from another region. And I would imagine they're like, well, wait a minute, we're the, the, the champions of that league. And uh, yet they're going to have to watch one of them celebrate today. I would think that's motivation for them as well. But just an outstanding, well-coached team. Got a question on the rear left. Gina Mizell from the Oregonian. Coach, you sort of just touched on how Oregon State has built its program over the last four, three or four years. As, as an opposing coach, but still that surveys the landscape of women's college basketball, had you noticed that over the past couple of years? And just to see, as somebody who else, somebody who's built a program herself, what's that been like to kind of see them sort of rise up over the past couple of years? Well, obviously we don't, we're in bed by the time y'all play sometimes, but I keep up with women's basketball. I think there are several things that I do notice uh, that touch me as a mother, is your coach has three kids, and to watch those three kids go on that floor to celebrate with their dad, special. And in fact, I saw one of his kids in the hallway yesterday walking in with his dad, and I looked at him and I said, that is what this is all about, enjoy it. Uh, I love seeing uh, the family dynamics when it comes to coaches and coaches sharing it with their kids. And I think that carries over to what type of program you build. And I don't know a lot about Corvallis. I played with a, a, a player many years ago on the Olympic team, Carol Minkin Shout. That's what I knew about Oregon State basketball. But as this program, that program has evolved, um, you see um, they have a commitment to making women's basketball very good, and their coach is very good, and um, they draw well. I'm sure it's a long way from home being in Dallas, but when you see them on TV, there are people in the stands that appreciate what he's building there and has built. Question on the rear right. So you said uh, yesterday that you know a lot of it is what defenses are giving Nina, but does she, and maybe all players do, but does she kind of ratchet her game up when it starts NCAA tournament? Uh, Jerry, I don't know. Nina gives you everything every night. It doesn't matter if it's the NCAA tournament or if we're up 30 and she's still in the ball game. Uh, these last two games, um, honestly, we took advantage of what we saw on film on things that the opponent did or didn't do defensively against Auburn when she had their 30-point game. They play a 1-2-2 half-court, uh, I don't even know, I guess you call it a press trap and all that. Well, the middle's exposed, and what perfect place to have Nina, who really is a ball handler, as a four player. Yesterday, uh, Florida State hedges and stays with the hedge long on ball screens. We'll get rid of it quickly and give it to Nina and let her go one-on-one -on -one with a bigger post player and she can get by them. So um, I don't know that it's any more than what we are trying to do to expose them defensively. Um, she's, she just she plays the same. She never gets rattled. She never gets too high. She never gets too low. Um, she's the same Nina. We have time for one more question for Coach. Okay, Coach. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. You Good bet. luck.
statement. Happy Easter. <laughs> Thanks, Coach.
Copy. We have a little information for you. We've our student athletes and coach are on the way down. This is a group interview now, and this will be for the first 15 minutes. Uh, you can ask questions of our student athletes or the coach. We'd prefer that you do the student athletes first so that they can go back to the locker room. But we will be here for about 30 minutes. Uh, again, if you're going to ask questions of our student athletes, please do so by identifying which one you want to answer first and so forth. It makes it so much easier for our ASAP people to take care of those quotes. Okay, we're about ready to start. Oregon State Beavers are with us now. <laughs> Coach Scott Ruick, his student athletes Ruth Hamblin, Devin Hunter, Sidney Weiss, Jamie Wisner, and Gabriella Hansen. Coach, your thoughts? Happy Easter, everybody. Um, <clears throat> last night was obviously a great night for the program. Uh, we took a minute to enjoy it, and then the team rested, and we went to work. And uh, we're excited to uh, be here today and for the next challenge. Okay, questions from the floor. If you would, please, your name and your affiliation the first time you ask a question. We've got one in the middle front. Gina Mizell, the Oregonian. Scott, natural progression has been kind of one of your – big phrases over the last couple of weeks. Um, would the next natural progression for this program be to knock off a perennial power like Baylor? And oh, by the way, if you do that, you would also get to the final four? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's next on the, on, the, uh, on the schedule. And so that's the next uh, focal point for us, certainly. And you just take them as they come, you know? And it's, it's the next game, um, you know? And you do that by playing possession by possession and preparing the same way that you have. and. So, yes, that would be natural. Question on the rear. Uh, Mitch Blomert, Waco Tribune Herald. Uh, this question is for Ruth. Um, you're going to see a lot of the two freshman centers uh, in Beatrice, Montgomery, and Kalani Brown tomorrow night. Just, uh, can you talk about like, what you've seen from them and what, you kind of expect, what kind of challenges you expect to see from them tomorrow or tomorrow night? I think they bring a lot to the team, obviously, you know, size and defense, but also O boards are huge for them, running the floor, getting easy layups. So I'm definitely going to have my hands full tomorrow night. Got a question on the front right. Stephen Hoggs with the AP. Jamie and then Sydney. obviously you get to this point. Baylor's been there, done that. They've, they've had a motto all year about eight is not enough. Talk about the challenge of facing a team with such a drive and determination like they've had. I mean, similar to what you guys are trying to do. Yeah, I mean, they have a confidence. They have been there, and so um, they already know what to expect, and they played at uh, the biggest stage, so um, they have that confidence. But I think um, 
we have confidence too. I mean, we're we're going places we've never been before, and that alone is um, a lot of confidence we can ride on. Yeah, uh, Baylor's a very talented team. Um, they've been around the block a few times. Obviously, they've been here before. They know what they're doing, how to win at this level. Uh, but I think we're just having fun, enjoying the moment, enjoying the challenge that comes with it. Um, and I know that this group, our group, is capable of um, doing big things, and we don't want to be done yet. Question on the right side. Hello, um, Ron Callen, 1190KEX. This question is for Devin Hunter and Gabriella Hansen. Guys, talk about Baylor. What are your impressions after watching them in person, watching them on tape? Start with you, Gabby. Um, huge key for them is transition. They push the ball like no other team we've kind of seen before. Um, uh, they're very versatile. Um, their posts are extremely physical. They definitely have size that we're not necessarily, um, well, we haven't seen. I wouldn't say we're not used to it because we have it every day in practice. So, um, <laughs> So they're a very versatile team, different team, but um, you know, we'll prepare just like we prepare for any other game. Um, I think watching them, um, you see they know how to play well with each other. They've been through it all. Um, they know where each other are and find each other. So I think that just um, they know how to work their system really well. Question on the outside right. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News for, for Ruth first and also for Jamie. Uh, Coach was talking yesterday, remembering back in, in the early days of the program when you guys were first starting out about 10 game Pac-12 losing streak and, and all the things you're going through. When you reflect on it, does it seem, I mean, how does that compare to where you guys are now one game away from a Final Four? Uh, it seems like a lifetime ago in some regards because we've grown so much and just developed the program so far since then, but it's, We've really experienced it all, just kind of climbing our way up this mountain, and I think that we're really excited for the next step. Yeah, I mean, obviously it feels a lot of a lot better to be in this position than four years ago, but yeah, like it's been said before, it's been a natural progression. Each year we've gone a step further and further, and so um, it's just really fun to be a part of. Further questions for our student athletes on the outside right. Question for Jamie, just coming into a pro arena, someplace he'd never, you know, been before, having the kind of success he did, what's that do for your confidence? I mean, and as a shooter, are you worried about shooting backgrounds, that sort of thing, or is uh, all gyms the same? Um, I think every gym has a little different atmosphere, but coming here is, um, is wonderful. I mean, a beautiful gym, great facilities, and um, to play in a place where the greats have played before, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I, I, I try coming into the game not worrying about my surroundings. I mean, it's just a ball and a hoop, and I've shot the ball a million times, and so um, that's all it is for me. Anything more? Okay, ladies, we're going to send you back to the locker room, and you can go one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to see the student-athletes back there. And if you would, please go up the guys – Follow me. Would you go up the steps this way, and not go through there? Thank you. All right. Questions for Coach. We got a question on the back right. Hi, Coach Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Does this need to be a half court game for you guys? Defensively, um, certainly that that is who we've been. Uh, that's why we have the numbers that we do. Um, defensive points against and field goal percentage. Um, we make teams work, typically, and we don't want to give up anything easy. Uh, that means keep them off the free throw line, keep them away from the basket, keep them out of transition, challenge everything. And so, yes, we, I mean, we, that's our MO, you know, and so that's what we've done all year. It needs to be another one of those. Question on the front. Scott, you mentioned a moment ago letting your team, stepping back for a moment, enjoying the moment, and not just automatically looking ahead. But to talk about how this team handled that and just all, and clearly, I mean, their focus now is on what's next. But talk about, like, you, you know, their ability to do that. It's not always easy just to enjoy it and then move on. Uh, um, you mean last night? Yeah, it's just, well, that, 
that's who this team is. I mean, it, it, we've had the adversity this year. You know, we got beat at Stanford late in our season and needed to respond two days later against Cal. Um, that's just one example. Um, you know, and, and so this group is so mature. And I think that's what everybody got to see that yesterday, just the way they carry themselves, the way they prepare, the way we handled adversity last night. DePaul made a run at us and didn't really phase us, just shook it off at, an, at a great possession, hit two big shots back to back to separate again in the fourth quarter. That's just who they are. And so um, handling success is adversity as well. Uh, that's sometimes tougher than, than adversity. And this team has done that. Um, you know, this is a, a team of juniors and seniors for the most part that have seen a lot. And so uh, moving from last night into this game, um, no concern there at all. Got a question on the outside, right? Scott, the way, I mean, this was new ground for the program going back 30 years just to be in the Sweet 16. And the way mm -hmm. they responded without the jitters. And, and I guess playing off the last question, uh, maybe an unfortunate analogy, but is this team playing with house money right now? Is this team just kind of loose and, hey, whatever happens, happens at this point? Well, I think this team's really confident. I, I think that's what we saw last night. This is a team that's prepared. Um, you know, we're all seeing how, how good the Pac-12 is. I mean, that's, that's one thing that, that it, it surprises me a bit how surprised I think people are across the country. I mean, you're listening to just the general general narrative of, of the Pac-12, and people are surprised. Surprised Washington could beat Maryland. We're not. We're not. I mean, we've played against that. We know how, how hard it is to play against that team and defend that team and how you can't blink or, you, or Walton's going to light you up, and that's not even mentioning Kelsey Plum. And, and so that's just one example. But going to UCLA, Stanford, Cal, um, all across the board in our conference. So um, this team's been to Notre Dame. Uh, they've played Tennessee. They, they've been to Carolina. They've been to Tennessee. They've, you know, they're, they're battle-tested. And so mm -hmm. the, the environment last night, um, I think, speaks to their maturity and their experience more than just a team that's just super loose playing with no cares. I, I don't see that at all. I see a team that, that just understands what competition is and knows how to rise to that and knows themselves well enough, enough to know, well, we can't focus on the outside stuff that doesn't matter. We need to focus on this possession. And that's what we've taught from day one. It's, it's one of the things that's allowed us to win when nobody expected us to, to be honest. I mean, this was a team two years ago when we were just learning how to win. You got to forget the fact that we haven't won much previously. You got to forget that. You got to put that out of your mind. All that matters is that you win this possession right now. And so going into last night's game, I think it was, was the same. You know, and I, I talked about Jamie Wisner's, the confidence she gives everyone. And we have players within our roster that, that give everybody confidence in that regard. And so you get over those things really quickly. And so uh, I think that's just maturity and, and high level competition. On the front. Scott, when Kim Mulkey took over her program, it was coming off a 7-20 and 20 season and never had any kind of success. And obviously, there were building points and moving up. And she talked about one of the things she saw of you yesterday was with your kids and, and how special it was to see kids. There's an image of her in 2005 up on the ladder with her two kids, one mm -hmm. who's now her assistant coach and one who's now at LSU playing baseball. And But it, the, the progression of that program, when you look at where you're at and think about you know, work and go, what, what does that do for you? And thinking about your kids getting to share that moment with you. Yeah, nothing better. There's nothing better. And, and I ran into her in the hallway yesterday when we were walking in and Cole was walking with me and she said, that's what it's about. That's what it's about right there. And, and I agree. I mean, that's what it's about. And, and so um, I was that, that was that kid at one time on, at the high school level. My dad was a coach took me everywhere. And so I, I've been immersed in this game uh, from the day that I could be around it. And even before, to be honest, I was in the gym. And so uh, I know that it is a bigger picture like that. And I think, you know, it does have an interesting impact on the team itself. I think when everybody sees that this is family uh, and it's a bigger part of a family, I think it allows the players to feel like they're truly part of your family. Um, they're taken care of because they see your kids taken care of and, and our assistant coaches' kids and so on. And so, um, yeah, to me, that's, that's what this whole thing is about. And I pray someday that, that I can be his assistant. <laughs> on the back and then we'll come to the front Chuck Coach uh, Nina Davis is a little bit an unorthodox player I guess 
Talk about trying to defend her and just, you know, her game, I guess. Yeah, dynamic. Um, just a knack for putting the ball in the basket. You know, there's, there's shot makers, and, that's, and she's one of them. Uh, she just has such a, a gift of timing, uh, relentless effort, and, uh, you know, she has the right, just such a, a mindset, just an attacking mindset. Um, that it's her job to get the ball, put it in the basket, and go get the ball in, in a lot of cases as well. And so uh, I agree. Unorthodox is a good word to describe her. You look at her shot, you'd think, well, that's somebody that we don't mind if she'd shoot it. But then she knocks down, you know, five straight 15-footers or 17-footers. And, um, you know, so matching her intensity is one thing. Maintaining position and then she's so quick back up, you know, once she does shoot the basketball. And, and so um, she's, she's a tricky matchup, no question. Uh, she looks like a guard, plays like a forward, and, uh, and, yeah, and brings just a relentless energy. So tough. On the aisle. Scott, before you go to sleep tonight, what will be the one thing that I guess maybe prevents you from going to sleep about the matchup with Baylor? <laughs> Is there one? I, and I know yeah. there's probably a lot of things. You go through an entire checklist. But are there one or two things that just jump out to you? Well, I, th I think overall, if you think, just look at their team, they have that combination of, of power and finesse. I mean, that's what makes – I think everybody probably p still playing does, um, where, you know, you can hurt a team from every, everywhere, outside, inside, all that. And so, um, you know, rebounding is, is, I think, the number one key. I, th I think we have made people miss shots all year. Uh, they are an outstanding shooting team. Can we make them miss? I hope so. I hope so. Um, then we can't give them second chances. You know, and that's what, you know, you look at a team that has as much size as they have, you know, and the athletes, that's going to be the game. Uh, the game is going to be, do they get second opportunities? You know, and so uh, if we can win the boards, uh, that will go a long way in saying, you know, what type of game this is going to be. On the front. You briefly touched on this a moment ago about other Pac-12 teams, the success they've had in this tournament. By the end of today, a Pac-12 team is going to be in the Final Four, have one of those slots. What confidence do you think that could give your team in, in knowing, hey, you know, we can be in the same spot there, or hey, we did win the conference title and shared, a, you know, won the tournament? Yeah, I think, I think that everyone's feeding off each other, I think. Uh, you, you look around and, and everybody realizes what kind of gauntlet this Pac-12 schedule was this year and we all know it we all know how well that league is coached and how dynamic it is and how great athletes there are now and everybody used to talk about west coast athletes leaving um, certainly tennessee has three oregonians on their roster um, that hasn't happened the past few years they, they've elected to stay at, as, as a majority anyway um, so it's just getting better and better but i think seeing each other have success certainly helps. I think everybody's just watching. I know everybody's watching close, each other closely, pulling for each other. Back the pack is what everybody's saying. Um, you know, it, it's fun. It's fun to see. And so, like I said, I don't think anybody's surprised, but certainly I think there, we, we'd be lying if we didn't say it was giving each other confidence, watching each other succeed. Question in the back. Uh, Coach, you kind of touched on it a minute ago about, <clears throat> about the size. And, and Baylor this season has had a lot of games where they have beating people solely off size because they bring so much of it off the bench. You carry a lot of that, that same size uh, in the lineup and, and on the bench. Do you feel like you guys can be that team that can finally neutralize their size advantage? I hope so. Yeah, I absolutely hope so. I, I think, I mean, you're right. You know, there, there's not um, a ton of teams across the country that, that have size. Yesterday, we were in shoot around and somebody not associated with our program, said, are you guys the tallest team in the country? You know, and I said, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd be curious to know. But across the board, you know, ironically for having a, a, a very small coach, we have a lot of tall players. And, um, and I love that, you know. And so in this matchup, certainly Ruth, you know, matches up well with their post players. And their post players match up well with Ruth. And you go across the board, and whether it's Marie that comes in, or Sam, or it, Bree, or you know, you go down the the list. We have length. You know, even at the guard spots, we have length, and that's been a a contributing factor to our shot percentage defense. You know, and so um, yeah. So it, will we neutralize each other? You know, I don't I don't know, but I hope so. So then it becomes a game of position, right? And so uh, who can use their size the best? of an overall 
women's basketball. This is not about looking ahead to next week, but we, we've all seen what Connecticut's doing, what they've won three straight national championships. We've seen some of the lopsided scores in this tournament. When you look at what they're doing and, you know, what some other teams on the rods are doing, kind of what's your perspective of what geno has been able to do and what the Huskies are doing, and is it good for women's basketball? Mm. I think excellence is inspiring. That's that's my I, I got to coach Brianna Stewart and Mariah Jefferson this summer as an assistant on the Pan Am team and I got to be around them and for three weeks and watch them just work in the way they carry themselves, the way they were teammates, the way they were coachable, what they brought to each game and each practice and the standards by which they do it. It's elite. It's elite. It, it, the standard is is elite. And for that, I don't I don't know how that could be bad. Um, I think the bar is just really high. <laughs> the bar is really high. And to watch it, is, it's, it's nothing short of, of inspiring. I don't know how inspiring can ever be bad. Um, I w do we want them to drop down and not be as good so that others can have a better chance? I think we're thinking incorrectly there. I think we all need to raise our level, continue to anyway. Um, I think that's a challenge to basketball across the country um, the AAU level, the high school level, to contrib continue to turn out more and more Brianna Stewarts. That's what we need. We need more and more. Um, and so uh, I don't think you can argue with anything they're doing, certainly. And, and I, I love to be inspired personally. Any more questions for Coach? Coach, good luck tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You mean that? Do you mean that? Make one. Do you mean that? I do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Me? 5'4. Yeah, I'm 5'4. Somebody wrote it on a good day. I'm 5'4.